Hey everybody, welcome to Everything Money. Today in this video, you will learn how to look at the company Ambev, the fourth largest beer brewer in the world, a Brazilian company. We will use our software to look at the financials, try and separate the financials from the stock price, and you will also learn how to trade with Mo. If you're interested in trading, looking at trading charts, you can trade Ambev at a quicker pace. With Mo, we will show you all of this. We will also use our stock analyzer tool to predict what we should be paying for this wonderful company, Paul, and in the end, why should you listen to us? I represent you. I bring normal person questions to a couple guys that control $100 million in businesses, stock, and real estate. We've been to their mansions. Uh, we've been to their mansions overseas, and, and, and you can learn from them and learn from us on how to evaluate a cool company like this. Paul, all the time people ask us about doing foreign stocks. We're doing one today, and I know you're a big fan of Brazilian waxes, both for yourself <laughs> and your spouses. And so I present to you Paul Gabriel and his uh, trimmed bod, hairless body. Go ahead, Paul. All right. So first off, guys, uh, we have a new Instagram account. So follow us on Instagram, our Everything Money account, as well as our individual accounts. Guys, this is our exclusive Everything Money software, which you'll get to see on this um, video. We'll explain more about it later. We go to eight pillars. I type in Ambev. Boop. Pick it up. Now, one thing that's interesting to me. Oh, wow. This stock is down a lot this mm -hmm. year. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Paul. Is this correct? Yeah. Yep. $3.90 down to $2.68? Yep. Wow, look at this peak, $9.36 in 2013. Yep. So one thing that's interesting, guys, this is a $42 billion company. We just did a video on Snapchat. It's an $87 billion company that loses a billion dollars a year. Yes. This is a $42 billion company that makes $2.6 billion last year. Big difference. So if you bought two of these, you would have $5.2 billion in profit versus a loss of $1 billion for the same price of Snapchat. <laughs> Just, just, I mean, this is what I look at when I look at companies when comparing cash flows and things like that. Yeah. Okay. So, our, what we do is we have an eight-pillar process that we use to evaluate a company. This software does it all for you, including shows you an eight-pillars tab that will recap it all for you. The very first pillar, we want the market cap divided by five years of earnings to be under 22.5. And we list it right here. Guys, it barely squeaks in. 21.5, it's a check mark. Yeah. Next pillar, we want the return on invested capital over the last five years to be over 9%. It is a check mark, it's 14.6. What this means is, this company does a great job of investing its debt and equity in the business and getting more gains from it. Yep. That is a very important factor here, one of the most important for every value investor out there. So, so far we have two check marks in this company. So this stock is down 67% in the last seven, eight years, and so far the first two metrics I'm a, I'm a big fan of. Now, Seth, look at this. Oh my gosh, look at that. Dividend yield. Three so this dividend yield is 3.5%. The market's currently like 1.2. It's almost triple the market. Now, one thing to keep in mind, guys, is that you're learning from us. Dividend, dividends aren't always secure. What you have to do is you take the dividends paid, which is on our main page of the screen, and you go up two lines. Free cash flow in the last five years is average 2.5 billion, and last year was 2.6. They paid out about 66% of their free cash flow in dividends. Is that a lot? It kind of is a lot. I don't know. Um, with a declining stock price, a lot of times cor the corporate guys will, might get a little scared. They might cut this dividend. I'm not sure if they will or not, but they might cut the dividend to buy back shares, do something like that in order to increase the stock price. So just something to keep in mind, but I would not just buy this company just for this dividend. Do I think this dividend is going away? No, they can clearly afford their dividend based on these numbers. So, so far we have two checks. Our next pillar. Pillar number three is revenue growth over the past five years, Paul. I'm sure they're doing well. They're the largest Latin American brewer. 12.36 billion to 17.44. Now with big jumps like this, Seth, check, what does this please. tell me? Uh, it's an established business. Right, right. We would expect slower growth from an established company like this, but last year was anomaly. People were sitting around drinking or is that, but that's 2021. I mean, what, what's the report? It could here? be that or it could be acquisitions. Remember guys, Growth from just acquisitions versus internal growth, natural growth. Natural growth is more important. We want to see that the business in and of itself can still grow and sustain itself, and the company isn't just making acquisitions to show everybody they're, they're growing. So something to keep in mind, and we'll look at that, the cash flow statement a little bit later. Our next pillar, pillar number four, is, revenue, is profit growth. Mm -hmm. 2.15 billion to 2.62, check mark. So even though their revenue is up a ton, their profit is not up a ton. But I like the slow, steady growth there from the past years, Paul. Yeah, well, it's kind of all over the place. Oh, stagnant. I'm wrong. Ten years ago, they did about a billion dollars in profit. So 
this is, whenever I see up and down profit, I definitely want to look at an average over the last five years. But either way, next pillar, pillar number five, is the silent killer. Shares outstanding. We want to make sure the company is not diluting its owners. Everybody ignores this pillar. They think that issuing shares is a good thing. It's not a good thing. It is diluting you as an owner. You're still going to own the same number of shares as they're increasing more shares, which is making the pie bigger and bigger, and your slice gets, is a smaller and smaller piece of the pie. So we go to the bottom of our software on the income statement. Five years ago, 15.49. Last year, 15.73. It's barely an X. I'm not as concerned about this. It is increasing, but very, very minor. I'm not concerned. 10 years ago, they had 15.59. 15.73. Okay, so that's an X. Pillar number six is total long-term liabilities divided by five-year free cash flow. We want this multiple under five. Can they pay off their debts, Paul? So we go to the main page of our software, our exclusive software. We look at the five-year average free cash flow, 2.5 billion. We multiply it by five, that's $12.5 billion. So. What that means is we want to go to the balance sheet on our software and look at their long-term liabilities and make sure it's under $12.5 billion. So like I said, if we scroll to the top, go to balance sheet, scroll to the bottom, long-term li- Wow. $2.8 billion. Oh my gosh. They can pay off their, their entire long-term liabilities in a little over one year. That's incredible. Now, why is that important? Seth, why is it important we, we want low long-term liabilities? Well, the health of a company can be defined by how it could maintain maybe a fall in sales or a COVID or a correction. And so obviously if you have more debt, you might not survive like staying we see. Staying in the game, of- exactly. Staying in the game is what's most important in investing. The As longer Warren, you're in the game, the more likely you are to do well. As Warren Buffett would say, it's hard for a company to go bankrupt if they have no debt. I don't, he, sa- he said that. I, I, did he say that? Yes. I've always said that, but I wasn't quoting Warren Buffett. Oh, really? I thought it was from one of his speeches. Maybe it is. I don't think it is, but... Either way, I've always said it's hard for companies to go under when they have no debt. This is very low debt, guys. I'm actually surprised by this. I thought it was going to be way higher than this. Mm. I thought it was going to be way higher. So this is a good check mark for us. Now, guys, the final metrics that we look at, the final two pillars have to do with free cash flow. Free cash flow is cash from operations, lesser capital expenditures. This is the money they use to buy back shares, pay those dividends, Mm -hmm. make acquisitions, and buy down debt, pay down debt. Now, in our software... We do the math for you, and it's the only software out there where we actually add this line to the free cash flow investing section. Other software has it in other sections. doesn't make sense to me. So 2.39 to 2.63. That's a check mark. Check and if you please. see here, their free cash flow is a lot more consistent than their earnings. Now, we have a check mark there. The last metric is we take this five-year average free cash flow, 2.5 billion, multiply it by 20 to come up with a market cap of $50 billion. The current now, market cap is 42, Paul. Current market cap is 42. We want the market cap under this number. That is a check mark. Now, does that mean go out and buy this thing? Not necessarily. But let's just do a quick recap of the eight pillars here. This software was created because our users asked us, how can we get access to this information without waiting for you to create more videos? So we did it. This software includes everything you've seen so far, plus a lot more. We are creating even more information here. You get exclusive concepts from us daily that's actually currently being offered in our Discord chat. You get access to Paul, to Mo, Seth, and I. You get the Stock Analyzer tool, which you'll see shortly. All eight pillars, everything here you get for only 90 cents per day. Mm-hmm. This is a no-brainer, guys. If you are serious about your financial future, just increasing your returns by 1% or 2% a year over a 30- or 40-year period can make you hundreds of thousands, if not millions, saving just a few hundred hours a month. This is a no-brainer. 90 cents per day, it gives you all of this information. So, like I said, Ambev, we can click on the actual eight pillars tab, and it just shows you everything. The only thing that has increased is the shares outstanding. Not bad. It, it's not bad at all, even. It's 2.8% over a five-year period. Okay, it's not a big deal. Everything else looks pretty reasonable. Now, what we're gonna do after Mo goes through his charts is, we're gonna see if this is even a reasonable price to pay. Because guess what? We've had eight check marks before and said, hey, the stock is too expensive. It's also about what you're paying to get that value. If you're interested in trading Ambev at a quicker pace, this is a long-term hold for us. But if you're looking at the quickness of daily, weekly momentum, you can join Mo in that bid and nation, that top tier of our community. Mo, are people trading this? I can't imagine the volume is there. So the volume is there. Go on. But I want, th- this is interesting because I want to show you a couple things here. This is for sure a 50% stock. And if you guys don't know what a 50% stock is, it means a stock that has a high and a low. And that midsection is about 
50% of that difference. So right now, just going back to 2018, and we have to on this one, here's your high, here's your low, here's that middle range, and you can see that even back then, it tried to pop up over, pop up over, and there's a very strong resistance line. So as of right now, it cannot get through that $5 range, which is that middle pretty much right now. So to me, if you're going to go long on this, wait for this to get into the sweet spot, but once you get up into this $4.50, $5 range, you got to take your money and run because it's going to need a lot of volume, like Seth said, to break through that level. Now, if you want to do something in immediate time, you can absolutely trade this. This is a pretty good looking swing trade right now. With the exception of earnings that are happening Thursday and a little bit of declining volume, you have a very nice stochastic here. If you get an influx of volume, you will break over this 25 day moving average and earnings might help you with that. So if this interests you, Join the Bid and Ask Nation for $1.50 more per day. You get all of the Everything Money software, plus you get access to me, access to the 900 people in the community, the Trading 101 series, every, um, the uh, Employed Trader series. Everything comes with that. Join the Bid and Ask Nation. The final piece of the puzzle is we'll use our stock analyzer tool, part of our software, to see what we should be paying for this company, what's a good price. Again, folks, we don't just talk in abnormalities like a, it, it looks like it's a good buy or anything under $2 is a buy for me. We want to get down to the math behind what we should be paying for this. And so we will use the stock analyzer tool. Paul, show us about it. Well, that's, that's a good point because people would see $2.68 of the stock and say, oh, it's cheap. Cheap, cheap stock, yeah. Well, if they all of a sudden just did a reverse split of one for 10, it'd be $26.80. So they can easily manipulate the, the stock price by, by doing stock splits and reverse stock splits. So, guys, the stock analyzer tools, including the software. So what I did here, Seth, revenue growth. Remember I thought there'd be acquisitions? Yes. So I went to their cash flow statement. In the cash flow statement, guys, in the investing section, there was a line for acquisitions and dispositions. And you know what? They have a lot of acquisitions. That's why there's negative. But they're not big. There's a couple of big ones here. 500 million, but relatively not huge acquisitions. So I was like, okay. I'm not as worried about that, though. Okay. So they're naturally growing. So I go to the Stock Analyzer tool. First thing I did was pick seven years of analysis, and you can pick one, two, or three assumptions. I usually pick two for more established businesses. What we want to do is determine a price we can pay today. And if we pay too much over the course of time, we won't get that return back. We might even lose money. So we want to make sure we're paying the right amount moving forward. Go ahead, Paul. So I did revenue growth of 6 and 9%. Shares change, 0 0.5 and 0. Profit margin, 20 and 22 Free cash flow margin, 22 and 25. And I did PE and price of free cash flow of 14 and 16 with my returns of 12.5%. Why 12.5%? Guys, investing in ETF will get you 10%. Mm -hmm. So to me, if I want to go buy an individual stock, give me a reason to buy an individual stock. Well, oh, because there's increased risk. I mean, you should be hitting yeah. more rewards. So, so let me get a higher return on my money. I hit the analyze button. Boom. All right, guys. Look at that. The price ranges from 230 to 350. So you know what? Smack dab in the middle might be it. It's actually lower than the, the, um, the smack dab in the middle. This actually might be a decent buy. Now, does that mean go out and buy it because Paul sets? No. Yes. Oh, no. <laughs> no. Uh-oh. You need to do more research. If you join the Everything Money community, the benefit is you can talk to 6,000 other people about the stock. Everybody can do pieces of the research, and you have a discussion about the stock, right? So they are paying a dividend. Now, one thing to keep in mind is the dividend does not get added to this return. That's a very common mistake people are making. It's, that would be double counting the cash flow, but at the end of the day, I'm not turned off by this company. I'm really not. And I like the fact that they had natural growth over the years without many big acquisitions. So, Can you imagine when White Claw hits Latin America? Is this White Claw company? No, but I'm just, okay. that, was, that was a White joke. White Claw man. has hit Latin America, hasn't it? I have no idea. I wouldn't know, but Jesus, White Claw in the States is just like, Grown ass men. You go to, you go to, the, you go to the gas station, there's like racks in They're like sold out of White Claw. Racks on racks. I mean, just everyone's drinking wine. Women love it. Kids love it. Okay, that's our take <laughs> on Ambev. An interesting stock. Most of the stocks we talk about are nose. This one's a close, Paul. Uh, keep your eyes on it. And if you need help keeping eyes on it, join our community and Mo will get you in the right direction. So that is our take on Ambev. Fondle the thumbs up. Watch more videos because we're giving away a Tesla when we hit 100,000 subscribers. And it's happening so soon. Uh, I'll be freaking out. Thanks for watching. See you next video. Love you guys.